The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, it's Basil Chapman, Tiger Edition is now, and uh, I'm just showing the 120 minute chart. This is what I show my subscribers every day, give a very detailed report of where we are on the daily um, Dow based on the left side chart, which usually just has a couple of moving averages. The right side chart also has the MACD, the moving average, convergence, divergence, the st slow stochastic, and the on balance volume. Let me just show you something here. So the 120 minute chart, look at the plethora of support levels all the way down to what's the last one there? 25,301 and 25,278. And the low today has been 25,303. Now, we saw that those levels were taken out uh, last week on the 9th, and we went under it. But we also saw that the resistance levels worked beautifully when I was saying that 26,600 area, the whole area of uh, that 26,600 had a just a bunch of Chapman Wave automated resistance levels. That became the barrier to, to overcome. It couldn't overcome. So here we go on the 120-minute chart. This is now a leg D to the downside in a channel. Now, I don't like to do this, but I will do this just to, for demonstration purposes. Otherwise, it starts to get too messy. I'll make it red because it's so important. I'm going to make it thick because it's so important. And just to show you, maybe I should even make it solid. Now you can see that. So this is the uh, support level, and that was the resistance right there. Oh, man, I'm going to have to <laughs> change. It doesn't matter. There we go. Let's make it nice and thick. Wait, big, big. There it is. So you can make it a darker green. Green would mean that it breaks out to the upside color right there. Change the color right there. Okay. So you can see that it's been in a beautiful down channel since the 26,689 uh, peak D high in the 2nd of uh, May. And now it's come down trough A, trough B, trough A, and then come all the way down three cycles. And now it's gone into a trough D. My leg D at this particular moment makes a trough if there's a higher low bar, but it's also Chapman Wave 5. That's the technique that I've developed over the years. I've been using it more and more now as more complementary to what I do because obviously five, five waves in the Chapman Wave methodology would only take you to a C, actually to a peak C. Then you need to go uh, – Six is down to peaks to make forming a peak C leg C on the downside, and then leg D comes up and on the same thing on the downside. So just to make it real clear, this is a technique that I've developed, which gives me a structure that I like to look at more as a confirmation thing. And sometimes you can even get a coda after that X is formed, uh, where there's one peak, and then you can start a brand new move either to the upside or downside. So it makes it a little complicated. I'm I'm, I'm trying to decipher it. To be able to explain it in a much easier way, I use it, but explaining it is not always easy. This Chapman Wake methodology of P, D, E, and F, that, that's a, a lot easier. Hey, look at this. Look at all the support levels here in the 120 minute chart, as I said, down to 25,278. And look at the MACD. It crossed positive, then went back to negative. And look at the slow stochastic. It's actually a lot better. It's at 44% right now. So there's a positive divergence. Here in the daily chart, we've made this beautiful arch formation that I was talking, uh, showing my subscribers. Uh, if you go to the exact peak D that was made at 20, 26,695 on the 23rd of April, also Chapman May 5, then a left side, right side price time match would have taken you to another couple of days to go. We've broken it to the downside in a lot quicker time. That says, be careful because the thrust of the momentum to the downside has accelerated. So that makes intraday now really important. If we close below, I'll be a little uh, liberal with this. We'll go to this low that was made in the gap up high on the 25th of March, 25,372. If we break decisively below that, which we've done today, but then if we close below that, now it's something very different because the next level of support will be 25,000. Uh, what did I say? 208. So this is going to be important that the, that the Dow closes above 
this first left side low of 25,372. I could even be a little generous and make it the one that was at 25,425. No, we are substantially under that. We want to see it close close to 20, uh, uh, 25,400 today, just to say, whew, uh, we've started to use support levels now as a cushion. That's really what I'm saying. Uh, when I look at the technicals, Look at the MACD and the daily. MACD is still expanding dramatically, and the stochastic is at 24%. As I said, I think we, we won't make a really decent tradable bottom until we get to either uh, the mid-teens. I wouldn't even be surprised in this particular move if we hate, have to wait for the single digits. All right, enough with that. Let's get to the nitty-gritties here. So the Dow weekly chart is way under the 14 period exponential moving average has taken out the low on Friday. The MACD actually now has just turned negative. I wouldn't have expected that it could happen so quickly. It was way, way strong. And the stochastic was up in the 97, 98% area. It's now down under 80%, 79. We could actually get a sell signal intra-week, but I have to wait for Friday to give the actual signal as an official thing, because you have to wait for a candle to complete. You can't on Monday, in the first three hours of trading, talk about something that still has uh, five and three quarters of five and a half days to go. So uh, let's just say this is, this is an ominous move at this particular point and a peak C, because what it says is that there could be a rally at some point, um, a kind of a, an emotional rally, and that rally could take it to a slightly higher high, and then you're going to have to do some backing and filling. So at this particular point, I'm looking at a very weak technical scenario in the Dow daily. We've just started a technical scenario in the weekly chart that says it's the beginning of the week, so we can all not talk about it as if it's Friday at 4 o'clock this coming Friday, but we can say this is a negative action right now. And the monthly chart, that big red candle I was talking about Friday in my show, which turned out to be a much better candle by the end of the day with that almost 600-point recovery from the low to the high, now it's back to big red candle. So this is just a time. I don't see any reason why we... I haven't, I've been saying this now for three, four weeks. This is a time for some caution. Why? Because so many of the indices and stocks became extremely overbought. They needed a rest. That's really important right now. Let's do the same thing with the S&P. And the S&P longer term is looking like the a monthly chart has a big red candle as well. But it made a new recovery high. Is that an F or an A? We don't have to deal with that right now. But the weekly chart is a peak C at a new all-time high. Hardly likely that it's not going to go to a D, but that might mean we have some more of a pullback coming up, and it'll be later on in the summer that we actually start to get the rally that takes it towards the uh, an all-time high above 29, 49.52, leg C down in the daily. MACD is very weak. Stochastics are 26%, very weak. And the 200-period moving average of 27.71 beckons. That's all I can say. Um, QQQ, a little bit of, of the... Uh, Bigger aspect here, big red candle, all-time high, but it didn't go. 191.32 was the high. Um, let me just check that out. 191.32 was the high in May. So this is still like G slash A. I'm almost sure it's going to turn out to be an A, but I'm not going to guarantee that because the, 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 the stochastic um, is still only at 78%, 76%, and the uh, MACD might deflect lower. So a lot happens on how the 174 level, the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily is handled if that's going to be a downside target. I'll be right back. That was a chapter of Titan. Dow's at 611. S&P is down 69, 70. We'll be back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, we're back. So uh, a couple of questions I had was, uh, what were the reasons for you shorting uh, the Dow or the semis or any of the things that you shorted? Uh, I'll get to that, but let me just go to this, yeah, because I think it's a question that is really very important. And the question is, in the Chapman way, where would this peak C in the weekly chart? Let's go to the Qs. The peak C at 191.32, previous all-time highs, 187.53 back in October of uh, 2018. I'm looking at this and saying, visually, the MACD hasn't crossed uh, negative at all. It's not even close at this particular point. And the stochastic's still away at 88%. So... I would suggest to you that a break under 170 into the 160s would say to me, I think what would happen then is that if you get a brand new buy signal in any of the other daily charts, then what we might find is that not only do we go to a D, it actually recycles. So there's such a big move to the upside that it goes D, alternate account E slash A, then F slash B, and then it turns out to be a B and we go even higher. But that doesn't mean to say that that's a guarantee. What it does say is it's very unlikely that this will come, become a C, peak C minus because it takes out the low of 143.46 made in December. That's 50 points, about 50 points, 48 points from here. So let's just say that at this particular point, you want to just go one step at a time. There's still some indexes and stocks that we like a lot we have uh, some positions. We're still trying to hold these long positions, not messing around. Anything gets taken out, but I'm done. We'll wait for a new buy signal. And yes, now, okay, the question about the Dow, let me just really quickly, because I've discussed this a lot. I discussed it at the time. First of all, it was a peak D. Um, that was a very quick peak A to B to C to D, and that usually doesn't guarantee that it's going to be a sharp failure. It says be careful when you get very quick peaks in succession, you usually have a sharp pullback. But the rally that went from 26, around about 310, 
to 26,689 back on the May the second, yeah, May, May the first, yeah, May the first. That said, the MACD was fading and the stochastic was fading. We were already short, um, but we had, we had given it a little bit of room, and that worked out very nicely because that made that arch formation that I call the dreaded H, and it plummeted below, and that's what it kept doing. So just to clarify. Now, let me just show you something here. I meant to do that earlier on. Look at this. I noticed this Friday, as the market, I mean, my show was finished, and I suddenly saw everything going up. That oh, no, I forgot to mention that the automated Chapman Wave support level, look how this one worked so beautifully at 25,329 back on the, uh, that was 22nd of March. And what was the low? 25,501. Right, and now look at this one. 25,467.19 was a generated automatic Chapman wave support level. And what was the low on Friday? When I saw this, I, uh, I nearly hushed. I nearly passed out. The low was 25,517. It got so close, uh, 25,517. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow, I wish I had seen that earlier. But, and then I thought, no, 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 no. That would have confused you because you would have wanted to maybe get out of your short position, maybe even take a long position. That would have been just the most terrible thing to do. Instead, we took some profits and still kept short position. So that's the reason why I, I remain short. And I think that the 200 period exponential moving average of 25,355. Um, that has been my target to the downside. We've already hit that. We've attained it now today. So that's one thing. Um, so that says we're getting to a very, um, we were on Friday morning when I was doing my show, said that we we're getting to a very overbought level on the VIX index. Remember the VIX was screaming up into, there it is, volatility index was screaming up into the 22, maybe 23 level. And I said it's in a leg E. It could pull back quite quickly. Wow! Did it pull back? It pulled back to eight. It pulled back from 23.38 to 18.87. That is a huge move down. Today we've had a really sharp rally. The the Dow has gone to new lows, but in fact the VIX index hasn't. The S and P. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's a chance that we could be calling this. Um, uh, China, U.S. tariffs, VIX spike, and I like to label them and tell you what they are, CBOE, volatility index, usually yields, tariffs, China, that goes all the dollar, this is Saudis, this goes all the way back to, um, December, to October of last year, then again December, so nothing's changed much. But now what we're looking at is that the VIX has become in play. It becomes something now that fund managers are looking at not just as insurance, they're actually using it as a trade. That's my thinking here. But maybe we don't take out 2338 just yet. Maybe it has to hold off just a little bit. And then maybe we take it out and then we have another pullback with some tariff news. You know, it's going to be news related all the time. But the reality is, don't think that the Chinese are just going to uh, uh, sanction everything that's going on. They're going to fight this tooth and nail. They're not used to this kind of conflict. They got, got their way for Years and years, and decade, over a decade. So this is not going to be easy for them. We'll see what happens. Now let's go back to our story here. I wanted to show you the uh, se so the question on the semiconductors went down to 105. It's at 105.62 right now. So yeah, we've been short, and one of the reasons is that we were making that peak D at 120.71. We've tried this a couple of times. And um, not always very successful about a couple of minutes or a day. And then all of a sudden, there was buying back, buying into the estimations. This time I said, I think something's different here. And one of the reasons was that the move that we had was not verified by my hearing or reading about billing having much improved over the last couple of months. It hasn't improved. And I said, Everything I look at says at least we should be regressing in the price and waiting for a move up in the billings. So there's some regression to the mean, but that's just a more philosophical thing. I'm not going to give you numbers because it's almost impossible to say. I have no idea. We haven't got the billings for April yet. Uh, so that's all I'm saying. But what I am saying is that based on the activity of a 50% rally from 80 to 120 uh, from the December low to the April high, 
you, you have to expect at least a test of 103, the 200 period moving average, uh, daily moving average, and then probably uh, chopping around below and above that for a little while. So that was one of the reasons. Another thing that I'm looking at here is within the context of uh, the different indices, look, silver isn't, it's turned around nicely. It's, it's unchanged right now at 14.79. But that's a terrible chart. It's still nicely in the oh, nicely. It's still decisively in the in the down channel. It would have to break not only the resistance at 14.93. It really would have to close above the high that was made on the eighth of 14.99. Closes above that with gold acting well. I said good. Now that we can see gold, we've got we've got a little change in dynamics now. Expect the dollar to maybe pull back more. Right now, dollar's holding up really well. It's only down two cents. Uh, two pips and uh, very good action. So he has the up channel in the dollar. Look, here it is. Up channel in the dollar. Uh, crude oil right now is down 69 cents. It tried to rally earlier. Look at this up channel. It's about to break the support level. I spoke about the XLE the other day. This is not good news for the market. I think we're going to be going lower, lower, lower. At least for this week, we'll see what happens. Now, oh, now it's down 651. I'll be right back. That's what's happening. I get technicians hour. Now I'd love to take your calls. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Let me talk about a couple of things. So I got an, uh, an email today. Uh, Three-month Treasury yield is now paying more than the 10-year yield Treasury. This last happened 10 years ago. 
and is much worse than the inverted yield curve, uh, which I thought, okay, that's very interesting because I've been watching that. That to me is, is, is important. Um, uh, unfortunately, Paul can't help himself, and he goes on to say, you will be getting a lesson on the bond market. You probably won't be talking about this. I just don't understand what he's thinking is. Paul, what's the matter with you? Just mention something, and it'll get discussed. I don't have to have a philosophical uh, as aspect to it, and I certainly don't have to have you be rude about it. I don't know, what, what do you want me to do? I don't handle the bonds. It's not my purview, Okay. You are getting a lesson on a bond market. You probably won't be talking about this. And then he goes on to say with another email, the down move isn't about tariffs. It's about the short of our lifetime. And it's got a lot further to go. Keep entertaining me. Um, Paul, when you come up with good ideas like the three-year and the 10-year, I want to deal with that because that's part of what I do. I don't need the crap from you, okay? Just, just mention what it is that's on your mind. Don't give me this, like... You're waiting for me to fail? What do you mean fail? I've been doing very nicely here. I don't think my, my subscribers are complaining. So I don't know what the heck's the matter with you. Fish. All right, so TLT right now is at up 116 at uh, 125.91. 126.69 was the previous high. Remember, this is leg D, and I said I don't want to see a peak D underneath the previous peak. I want to see this one go screaming past the other one because that says it's a valid uh, cup formation and we can deal with it. Well, it is. It's going towards that level. And the other thing that we're looking at here is the weekly chart, the MACD and stochastic. MACD is good. Stochastic is very weak. In the daily, they are rising. Now, I've been saying, Paul, I've been saying for quite some time now that the history for me of looking at bonds is that when the stock market starts to deteriorate, listen carefully, very often, majority of times, it didn't happen a little earlier this year, but the majority of times is where the general public and fund managers start to take money out. It migrates, it's a big word to note, called migrates, and it goes migrates from the from this equity market the volatility of the equity market to go to the so-called, I always say so-called safety of bonds because we know that nothing is safe, but it is safer in putting it in terms of like putting it in cash. That's what they're thinking. So let me say that again. Bonds are rallying right now because it's that whole safety factor. That's my interpretation. Could be wrong, but that's the way I've looked at it, not for years, but for decades. We'll see if that works out. At this particular point, it is working out. And the monthly chart has had another good green candle, but it needs to break. If you really want to see bonds streaming higher and yields going down, then you would see 127 in the uh, TLT sometime in May, and that would start a new leg C to the upside. Next thing, I had a question about GBTC. Now, this is a good question in, in relation to the low that was made in the at three dollars and sixty six cents in the uh, what is it called? Oh, it's changed its name. Grayscale. I didn't even notice that. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust BTC um, trading right now ten point twenty one up a dollar sixty one up eighteen percent on the day. So the question I had was, uh, Larry wants to know, Basil. If you have time today, could you look at GBTC and give me your take on a possible pullback level? All these time frames, daily, weekly, and monthly, look bullish to me. I'm a long-term holder and would like to add more before this takes off to retest the 38 high. Oh, the 38 high, 38.71 high that was made late at 2017, right? Do you see this pulling back at all and potentially how far down would you look? Thank you, Larry from Detroit. Larry. Uh, first of all, congratulations. I know that you've said this for a while. You've had this, and you, you're, you're treating it as a longer-term position. Leg D in the, in the weekly chart, only a new leg A in the monthly chart, and that's a good sign. Now, you ask about a pullback. Let, let me tell you something. When something is on fire, what we're looking at is I, we've got a stock that we, we've been wanting to buy uh, for at least uh, four days or five days. And it's called Carbon Black Inc. Cybersecurity, and uh, it gapped up actually all week since last week, 
and it's now a stellar leg C, and it's got a, it almost looks like GBTC. And one of the reasons why it's still on fire is that it, in cybersecurity, it's in an area it had very good earnings. It's an it's kind of an IPO. It came out back in 2018. It plummeted from round number 35 high down to 11.80. And now look what's happened. It just you can't. I was going to do this right here. I said, uh oh, this looks like a move that if it goes above the 200 premium moving average. You have to grab it because I've shown this as a demonstration many times in my show that occasionally you'll get these stocks that in a B and a C, they just keep going and going and going. And all you can do is close your eyes, grab it, but you have to take a smaller position because it's now you're gapping up and, and just hold it. And that's all you can do. So let me go back to what we were looking at, GBTC. So because this is in an area that's done very well against the backdrop of a horrible market, the GBTC, that is Bitcoin, has been uh, since, I think it was, I forgot to put the date, that was in February or March? That was in February, the week of the 7th is when it hit the low and it took off. Since then, it's been almost as if it was a kind of a recovery play, but then this big move in the day, in the weekly chart that started off um, on the week of the 3rd of May at 6.11, this is still now a leg D. And what's happened is it's the same thing. It is the risk on in terms of saying this is what's doing really well, Bitcoin, while the general market is doing badly. The Bitcoin needed a theme. It got that theme when I think was it Morgan Stanley or Goldman, one of those said we're going to take a, a position and then Fidelity said we're going to start something. All of a sudden there's a legitimacy. So there wasn't even a chance to get in because unless you were buying one day pullbacks, it's just gone straight up. So now let me tell you, it's in leg C at 10.28. It could make a peak D, a peak C, and then go to a leg D, but that leg D would have to be above the high of today, 10.45. So here's what I'm going to say to you. Because this is in play right now, and because there's a much greater risk, I'm going to suggest that you just start a very small position at 10.25, 10.27 right now, knowing that you could get a, a peak C, which could be even fill the gap, but with a really good chance that it's going to go to a leg D in the daily chart. But at the same time, the only reason why I'm saying it is because if it, if it does pull back below today's low of 9.39, that's huge, that's like a 10% risk. But at the same time, if it does pull back and then comes back in and then makes a higher high and it does that tomorrow, that extends leg C and now you're already in waiting for a peak C and then a higher high to leg D. So you've got a comfort zone attached to it. If, in fact, this becomes an alternate count because of the peak C1, C2, double top at 7.48, then this becomes DE. This could be an F. It's looking to me more like it's C. So I'm going to suggest take a little bit now. Give it a. You have to give it a bit of room. I've got a feeling this is going. This new position is going to give you the most amount of information that I could ever give you because it's going to be the real thing. The action is going to tell you a lot of what's happening. I'll be right back. Dow's down 633. Dow's a Chapman Tiger Technician Zone. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back. So I was asked about the XLU. That is the SP Select uh, Utility Spider Fund. Trading up 32 cents at 58.27. Remember, this is this is the whole idea of of looking for that safety trade. So yeah, you can get some utilities, you can get some uh, capital gain, but at the same time, you're getting a dividend. How long you keep it for is also the issue. You've got to be thinking maybe at least three months, or maybe it's a rolling uh, dividend. I don't remember. Uh, but in the meantime, 59.07, 59.07 was the high. Back in March, uh, it's only pulled back a little bit. It's gone to the 56s, and now it's trading back at 58.30. Very nice uh, flag formation, de de slightly lower highs, slightly lower uh, highs, and slightly lower highs and slightly lower lows. And it's holding very nicely. It's in a peak C in the monthly. I think it's going to go to a D. So utilities are good. IYR, um, same thing, is holding very nicely. It's down 42 cents at 8. 86.46. This one is perhaps a little bit more tied directly to the economy in the REITs. The iShare REITs, it's trading at 86.46, down 42 cents. But there is an H pattern that survived the pullback. And now I'm looking at the potential. I'm going to even put this in. It's more like a diamond, but I'm going to make it into an oval pattern. Not a perfect one, but pretty good. And this oval pattern says that at some point, in the next month, there should be an attempt to try to get back to the high of 88.23 that was made back the week of the 19th of April. Um, it's holding very nicely right now. So, yes, there are things that are kind of working. Now, IYT was a question. What was that question? Uh, YRC and IYT down. Yep, the IYT, we're out of that. Uh, we went from 186 is our entry. It hit 200. We've also taken profits. Then we got out of it. Uh, now, now what we're looking at is, uh, I don't know if this cup formation is going to work because it's taken uh, the 200 period moving average below it. It's at 184.99, down 5.81, down 3%. This is not a good thing. So what we are looking at is there's a peak C in the weekly chart, and it, it was only a it was a good retracement, maybe a two-thirds retracement to the all-time high. Now it's kind of failing. Uh, the MACD is still good and stochastic is not good in the daily chart, a uh, weekly chart. So I'm watching this closely because it's coming down with the Dow itself. So the industrials and the transports are coming down today. In unison, 
That's that that makes me kind of cautious. XLK, I spoke about this a lot, and I said XLK is trading. Um, it made a peak E at 79.70 on the 1st of May, uh, looking vulnerable to a pullback. Made a new brand new peak B in the weekly chart and an F slash A in the monthly. Hey, this is a big red candle. But in the meantime, considering the number of days it went up, it's taken a lot fewer days to take out those lows. My question here is. How is the XLK at 73.45 down 2.73 going to handle the 72.34 low of the 27th of March? If it decisively takes it out, you've got to anticipate at least a pullback to the 70.85 area of the 200 period moving average. So, so far, you can just call this a very well deserved breather after a spectacular 57 to 79 rally uh, in the months from December to uh, the 1st of May high. That's a spectacular gain. It just needs a pullback. Um, XL, XLF, so the XLF is um, trading down. Now, here's something that's going to be very important. The XLF has tra traded very nicely. It's not great, but very nicely. Going to a peak E in the Chapman wave back on the 1st. First of May at 28.14, pulls back and then goes to 28.12 failure. Uh, on the third, and now it's trading at 26.69. My target here has been the 26, um, the 26 is at the 200 period moving average, probably try to test the exact line of 26.62. But I'm a little worried because the weekly chart, although the MACD and stochastic are good, I have to watch how it handles the 14 period moving average. It's just under that right now. And that resistance that I've spoken about, Chapman Wave inside track, repellent resistance zone has repelled the price once again. Look at the beautiful um, declining channel with the, the rhythm of a cup and then a V-shaped pullback, keep getting back to this green line and then failing. So I'm watching this closely, how the S&P financials handle uh, the next uh, the whole week is going to be really important. Uh, KRE, KRE is a question that Dan carries the S&P. This is a regional bank. Ooh. What happened? I forgot to uh, notate this. Let me just do that real quickly. Identify the most lowest obvious low bar. Merely count each successively higher peak alphabetically in sequence, uppercase on the way up and uh, lowercase on the way down. F, G are the high peaks that you can get to. In this case, it went to an F in a very quick succession. Now pulling back very sharply. Went to 50 in the 56s. Now trading in 53.34. Um, not that great. It's not nearly as good as the XLF. The regionals are weaker at this particular point, although I keep reading that the regionals should do better. They haven't yet done better. So I'm watching the KRE trading at 53.34 down $1.74, actually down minus 3.16%. That's a big move. Oh, it opened at round number 54. So 54 is going to be the level to pierce in the very short term to close above, and that'll be a good sign. Then it says it can uh, retrace and test the 53.37. 5537 200 period exponential moving average but this uh, doesn't look too great right now another question i had was uh where did it go where did it go where did it go oh yes the hgx now this is a big issue for me the hgx is the philadelphia housing sector index and i haven't yet figured out i need to check that this is just philadelphia or is it the philadelphia that the index that's based in Philadelphia, I must check there, because if it's just Philadelphia, wow, it's had a fantastic run. Now, somebody who builds houses in Philadelphia and flips them has done very well. So maybe that's the reason why 227 in December to the most recent high of PG um, at 316. Wow, 100 points, almost a, what, a 28% gain. That's very spectacular. And now what we're looking at is, um, yeah, we're looking at, just a little bit of a pullback. So, so far, the housing uh, index, housing sector index, is doing very nicely in relation to uh, the general market. Let's just look at HOV, Havana, Havnanian, that's it, Havnanian, goes to peak A, B, C, peak D. Uh, in the daily chart, just above 17, trading at 15.03 right now. Horrible weekly chart, terrible monthly chart. Yeah, some of these home builders have not done very well at all. And that to me is another issue. Apple. Question about Apple. 
Apple is uh, trading right now down 10 at 186.74. Um, had a peak deed, wasn't the gap down, looked like an island reversal, but it isn't. <sighs> I'm just going to say this again. I think that the FANG stocks had made major thrust to the upside in 2018, and this is part of the huge digestive, digestive formation that's been going on. Uh, Amazon... 2050.50 back in September, plunges to round number 1307 low in December, comes all the way back to the 1964 level, is trading now at 1826, high level consolidation so far. And that's how you can go through all of these. I'll be right back and we'll talk about my cash index, uh, Syntas, um, Amazon, Spy, and Home Depot. I'll be right back. Dow is down 637. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, yeah, a couple of things uh, we're talking about in the den here. I, I do think it's debilitating when uh, there are cross currents and uh, there's a debilitating effect when you're trying to focus on something and you just keep getting hammered by different things. It's different if it's just a business related or whatever the issue is. If it's a single minded issue, you can take the thrust of the the, uh, the bows and arrows that come at you. But sometimes when they're really challenging, it, it, at least in the shorter term, it could become de debilitating and we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, uh, Amazon. So I, I'd say we'll look at Sintas right now. Sintas is down. It held quite nicely before. Um, yeah, it's holding pretty well. It's down five at 217, all-time highs 
223, it was made on the 6th of May. Um, that made a peak C, uh, if there's no new high this week, in the weekly chart. So that's my cash index of syntaxis, uniforms, overalls, and rentals, just holding really well. This is good. The jobs, yeah, more jobs means it's good for this company. But the Magni just turned down. Stochastics at 75%. I'm watching that on a daily basis. Amazon, did I talk about Amazon? Yeah, Amazon pulling back. It has room to pull back still. But it is in a, in a sell mode in the daily, nothing yet in the weekly chart. Um, SPY, look at the SPY index. Look how quickly it's come down from the 294.95 all-time high of the first, trading at 280 right now, 14 points. That's a big move in just a, a week and a half. So, But the weekly chart is still holding quite nicely. And Home Depot, really important. Home Depot... Um, it doesn't look that good right now. It's trading at 189, all-time high. was 215 back in September. Then the recent one is at 208. I'm watching this closely because if Home Depot starts to break into the 185s, they could portend even further weakness. So just we got to be careful. We've been waiting for this for a long time, waiting for some kind of a pullback. We've got it. Um, I'm just suggesting be cautious. Look at what you want to buy. Make a list, and then you're going to have to be steadfast in your determination to say, that's the level I like. I don't care what the news is. I'm at least going to start a position there. But have a little patience. You'll get your opportunity. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. I think you'll find it informative and hopefully profitable. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day.